Hey friends, welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and we're spending this week at beautiful Canton Lake in northwestern Oklahoma. Come along with us. This is our first time camping in Oklahoma, and we're thrilled to be filling in another state on our RV travel map. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Big Bend Recreation Area offers 102 campsites with electrical and water hookups, and 12 dry campsites nestled among the cottonwood, elm, sycamore, maple, oak, and willow trees right on the shores of Canton Lake. Amenities also include flush toilets and showers, a dump station, four boat ramps, day use areas, and an 18-hole disc golf course. We've never seen a Corps of Engineers campground we didn't like, and Big Bend is no exception. We're in Site E27 with 30 amp electrical and water. Other sites have 50 amp electric, but with its broad lawn on the patio side leading down to the lake, we feel that A27 is the best site in the campground. It's costing us $22 per night. As one might expect for the first week of October, Big Bend has been dead as a doornail midweek, with only a handful of campers, and filling up most sites on the weekend. There are other Corps of Engineers facilities on Canton Lake, including Canadian Recreation Area just a few miles south of Big Bend. Here campers will find another 120 campsites, two dump stations and three boat ramps. Some of this campground is treed, while much of it is wide open thanks to a tornado that scored a direct hit on the campground in 2011. When we come back following a quick ad break, we'll explore the area, including the lake and dam, nearby rural towns, hiking to the top of some surprising nearby mesas, and even get the kayak out onto Canton Lake. We'll also deal with some unplanned electrical repairs in the RV, so stay tuned. Canton Lake was formed in 1948 by the Corps of Engineers, which constructed an earthen dam 68 feet high 
and nearly three miles long to impound the North Canadian River. With 45 miles of shoreline, Canton Lake is known for its fishing opportunities, especially walleye. The Walleye Rodeo Fishing Derby is held annually in mid-May and draws thousands of visitors to the area for the four-day event. Right on the dam, you'll find the Overlook, part restaurant, part live bait shop and fishing store, and part camping supply. Their exceptionally friendly staff serves up a killer bacon cheeseburger, and their catfish basket is mighty tasty too. Oklahoma is well known for its severe weather, and wind on the lake is a common occurrence. When it rains here, it positively pours. We fortunately avoided the severe thunderstorms with hail and embedded tornadoes that passed just to the south with the passage of this cold front. RV life is about going with the flow and taking punches on a regular basis. Shortly after our arrival at Big Bend, our power went out. When I went out to check the pedestal, I discovered to my horror that even though we were using our surge protector and the pedestal power was good, something had caused our shore power connection to overheat and fuse our power cord to our trailer's power inlet. Try as I might, I couldn't separate the two, even using a screwdriver as a pry bar. That meant driving nearly an hour and a half each way to an Amazon hub counter in El Reno to pick up replacements for both. But our shore power connection wasn't the only victim. Our 3000 watt Xantrex inverter charger also took it on the chin. It would still invert our power, but the charger portion was dead as a doornail. Possibly whatever fried our shore power cord also took out the built-in transfer switch. But in any event, once we replaced the shore power cord and inlet, the inverter charger wasn't recognizing our shore power connection. We're still within the two-year warranty period with Xantrex, and we're presently working with them to warranty the unit. But we don't have the luxury of going for weeks without a functioning inverter charger. So I broke out the credit card and had a new unit overnighted to Oklahoma, which I got to install in Big Bend. This part of northwestern Oklahoma is unexpectedly diverse, geologically speaking, Rolling farmland here is speckled with wind farms. In addition to ranching and farming, the oil fields here also drive the local economy. The tiny hamlet of Canton, population 625, lies just downstream of the dam, which was constructed in response to a devastating flood here in 1923. The town site was selected when the Kansas City, Mexico and Orient Railway, later part of the Atchison, Topeka and Santa Fe Railroad, crossed the North Canadian River here in 1905. Somewhat larger than Canton, with a population of more than 2,500, Fairview lies a few miles northeast of Canton Lake along the Cimarron River. Here, RV travelers will find basic goods and services that they may need during their stay here. The first permanent settlers arrived in Fairview at the time of the Cherokee Outlet land opening in 1893, and the railroad arrived here in 1903. When we 
come back. Following another quick ad break to pay the bills, we'll bring you along hiking at Gloss Mountain State Park and kayaking on Canton Lake right from our campground. So stay tuned. There's much to see and do in this area, but if ATVs are your thing, Little Sahara State Park is home to 1,600 acres of sand dunes, ranging from 25 to 75 feet high to ride. There are 86 RV hookup campsites here with electricity and water, along with 143 tent sites for camping. Another state park, Gloss Mountain, is also nearby for those looking for a more mellow experience. There are no campsites or other overnight accommodations here. Instead, this park is home to the mesas of Cathedral Mountain and Lone Peak Mountain that glisten in the sun thanks to embedded selenite crystals that give these formations their name. Also known as the Glass Mountains, these mesas rise 150 to 200 feet above the surface of the plains, with the highest elevation in the formation around 1,600 feet above sea level. The first American explorers referred to them as the Shining Mountains when they saw the formation in 1821. A trail from the parking lot alongside U.S. Route 412 leads to the top of Cathedral Mountain. Just for the record, drones are prohibited in Oklahoma State Parks, as they are in many state parks across the country. We kept things entirely legal by taking off and landing from outside the park's boundaries. It's mid-afternoon on Saturday, and the Canton Lake is like glass. The lure of dropping our kayak onto a lake like this for a peaceful paddle is too strong to ignore.
We hope that you've enjoyed exploring this part of northwestern Oklahoma with us. If you liked this episode, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up down below. And while you're down below, that's where you'll find the comments section, where we'd love to hear from you after each grand adventure, which we premiere each and every Wednesday evening. Coming up next week, we're going to be heading down to the Wichita Mountains of Oklahoma. Yes, there are some mountains in Oklahoma. So if you're not yet a grand adventurer yourself, now is the perfect time for you to go smash that little subscribe button right down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen and ring that notification bell to be sure that you never miss a grand adventure. We'd be honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. So until next Wednesday from the Wichita mountains, please remember life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.